Well, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about convergence. Now convergence is alignment of your three color guns on your picture tube. Inside the neck are three color guns that aim their electrons at the back of the tube on the inside to the phosphor to generate the image. Now you have to align those those electron guns. And then they're, you don't, they don't physically move, but you have the rings on the neck. You can move those and create different magnetic fields and magnetic orientations to properly align the electron guns. And a lot of people are scared or hesitant to mess with them. A lot of people don't even know about them or what they do. So just going to be a basic tutorial on how to properly align. I mean, to do a full-blown tutorial would take hours because it is a very refined process. We're just going to very quickly try and get this, this done. So let's say you have to do a tube swap that involves removing the yoke and removing the rings and all that. Uh, of course, you want to get your yoke back on in the same original location that it was. Uh, there's a screw on there you loosen up, and you can actually take the yoke and turn it left and right, and you can take the image. The image will shift around left and right. So if you ever get an image where it's crooked, you just take the yoke and, and twist it, and it'll loosen that screw, twist it straight, and it'll line it back up, you know, left and right. But uh, that's not the purpose of this. This is going to be a purpose. The purpose of this is about the uh, convergence. So if we zoom in here, you can see uh, how very off that is. Now, as a good example here is that the bottom is only red. You see here that's only red. Hey, how's it going? Sitting here on a, on a <laughs> stool with the camera on the tripod just narrating. Uh, you can see that it's out of focus slightly, and it's only red, so there's no convergence. But up here, that's very bad. And up top, it's even worse because it's only red and yellow and there's no blue. So if we were to uh, try and fix this, all you have to do is adjust your rings on the neck. Now there's more, the ways to, there's more than just that one way to do it. It's more than just moving the ring around. You have to take the entire assembly, move it forward and back, get it just in the right location. So let's see if we can't get this done fairly quickly. It's not that difficult. It just takes some experience and some time. So you can see here I have the ring set right there and I've got it loose I did all this on purpose for illustration purposes you can see that I can actually move this all around here like this it's all loose now if we just generally put it back in a regular general area you can see that it's different now I can I'm just gonna take this and move it around like this now watch what happens see see this here what's all happening now if I just Without moving any of the rings, if I just move the assembly in a certain location by turning it and moving it, watch how, see that? I can actually, if I position this roughly, let's say, there, just from putting it in the right location, sometimes you can get results like this. It's still not perfect, but you can see that it is absolutely better than it was. So, it, so right now, what you would do Ideally, is you would tighten it down, but we're not going to do that. We are going to go into our diagnostic menu here and go to our monitor patterns, and we'll go to our red screen. So you can see I have a mostly, well, I have a red screen here, but I want to talk about purity. The very first two rings on this, these very first two rings are purity. And that, uh, if you ever have a tube where you have like a, it's an all, red screen but one corner is blue or one corner is green or whatnot discoloration if the degaussing doesn't fix it and moving the tube doesn't make it change or fix it it's a purity issue now the way you fix that is by adjusting these two first rings I'm not going to do that just yet I'm just going to move this around and you can see here as I move it around I, in the corner here I get blue see how it gets to blue there it goes blue and back to red and there you go there, there. see all I'm doing is taking this and turning this. Now look at that. So that's a purity issue. And sometimes it can be a yoke misalignment and you can co course or you can compensate for that by those two first purity rings. But the first two rings are what you would adjust. If you have this in a in a perfect location where your convergence is perfect but you're but you have the discoloration, all you have to do is just loosen uh, these two rings and move them around. Hey, I got a text message. I'm popular. All right, so that's how you. That's what the purity does. So let me get back to a screen where I have text. I see I'm all messed up again now. So let's go back to crosshatch pattern, and you can see here. I'm gonna try and get this, move this around, and get it back to perfect. Uh, let's see. Let's say. 
Well, I'd like to get back to that other screen, quite honestly. Because this is not working out for me here. Uh, that's okay. But we still have purity problems. and So this is a good general place to leave it, I'd say. Uh, but I need to tighten it down. And let's turn it back around this way. I will tighten it down. So, hmm. Okay, that's not bad there. All right, so let me tighten this down. Give me a moment. Let me grab a screwdriver and tighten that down. Hang on one second. Okay, so now I got the ring assembly tight. It doesn't move anywhere. And we'll get the camera on the tripod and get some adjustments made and just see if we can make it look as good as we can. So right off the bat, it's not too bad, but we still have, you can still see here, uh, and you can see me, hey, what's up? How it's not quite perfect. We still have red bleeding on the top. So first thing to do is turn our contrast down. So that, because sometimes if your contrast is too high, it can make you give false reading. So we'll turn it down to roughly there and turn our brightness right about there. So you can already see that it's not too bad. Hello. <laughs> All right, so, uh, oh, I forgot to mention, let's go back here, I'm sorry. I forgot to mention the other rings. Uh, the middle two rings are the, the middle two here are for red and blue. There's this one and this one are for red and blue. I believe horizontal? No, vertical. These two are for the red and blue vertical, and then the other two over here are for red and blue horizontal. So that's how you adjust those. So if we were to try and raise and lower this, we would actually move the back two for red and blue. And then if we were trying to make this go left and right, we would move these two. I may have that backwards, but we'll find out here shortly. And of course we know what purity is, so. Okay, so in theory I would move the back two rings get the red and there you go so now our red is better now we want to move the middle two to try and line up now see now we're getting all out of whack again it's not always easy But that's not bad. Not bad for a quick adjustment. Let's zoom out a bit. Um, yeah, I mean, that's not bad at all. Not for a quick couple of minutes. I just wanted to make a quick video showing what this is and a little, just a little quick demonstration. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Let's turn our light off. I'd say uh, that's good enough for government work. Let's move our H position over slightly, roughly there. Yeah, I'd say uh, I'm happy with that for sure. Let's... Yeah, if we go up here and look, compared to how it used to be, that's good. Darn near perfect. What do you think? I'd say that that turned out real nice. Uh, well, we got some in the corner there. Not uh, worth messing with. But on the main here, yeah, I'd say that's good. We're still kind of blurry a bit, but this tube was always a bit blurry. Um, actually, let's zoom in on something to see if we can make it a bit better. I think it's already set to the best it can be. However, it is far and above better than it was. So if we do... Yeah, roughly there is about as good as I can make the focus. You see I have full adjustment, but roughly... Right about there is as good as I can make the focus. And it's good enough. But yeah, I'm not happy with that. Let's get out of here and see how the game actually looks. Well, 
Well, the colors are off because this this uh, chassis was not part of this tube. This chassis wasn't on this tube originally. I think this was a this was a K7400 tube, and I put a, a 7000 on here just for testing this. Uh, but let's go to black level contrast. Yeah, unfortunately, when you turn the contrast up, sometimes it, you you sacrifice focus. Um, but. I'll say that looks pretty good. What do you guys think? I'd say that's a good outcome. So there you go. Just wanted to make a quick uh, tutorial video there on uh, how to do some, how to do your convergence, and hopefully you learn something. Because it's not that scary. It's not difficult to do. And if you ever have to do a tube swap that involves replacing the yoke, and of course the ring's got to come off to change the yoke. You, it's not. It's all about finding the right position on the on the. You want to keep the original rings with the original tube, ideally, uh, because if you take the yoke off and you damage the rings, you're you're gonna have to replace the entire ring set with one from another tube. But so ideally, you want to keep the same rings on the same tube forever. But that's not always the case. Sometimes you get some that are busted and you have to just replace the ring set. So if you have to do that, it's always important to get it in the right spot. Now, if you're taking it off of another tube for a swap. Um, of course you want to get it in the right spot as well, but sometimes you can mark it and things like that. But ideally you'd want to, it's all about finding the right orientation this way, combined with this way, get it just in the right spot to where you get it just as good as it can possibly be. Then you secure it down and adjust your rings accordingly. Again, the first set of purity, the middle two I believe are for your, um, well you have to use the, 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 these two rings are red and blue, and these two rings are red and blue. And you have to just kind of use them in, in conjunction with all the, the other ones. So if you move these two, it'll affect these. Even though they don't move, you'll have to move these two. It's a, it's a, it's a whole, that's why I say to do a proper demonstration would take hours. But just for the sake of making a quick a half hour video or so, uh, just to go over the basics of it, that's really the, all, what all this entails. So don't be scared. It's not too difficult. Of course, you want to make sure you know what you're doing and make sure you don't your hands don't wander while you're looking at your screen. Use a mirror if you want. Uh, but since I have the workbench here, I can just grab this and look look right over at it and not mess with and worry about moving my hand and touching stuff. Because if you touch the yoke while it's powered up, you will get <laughs> shocked pretty good. You won't get shocked from the magnet wire because this is, has a coating on it. You won't get shocked from touching this wire on the yoke. But if you touch these wires, yeah, you'll get zapped a bit. So. Uh, not that I've ever done that. <laughs> not that I've ever done that. So, just wanted to show that, share it off. If you guys have questions, hopefully you learned something, uh, let me know. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.